you know, we're still a couple months out from American blockbuster movie season starting up in earnest. Even Captain Marvel in the solo Marvel Cinematic Universe origin movie tradition is more like an easygoing character piece bookended by scenes of alien chasing and spaceship punching, but if you just can't wait on absurdly oversized spectacle, don't mind subtitles, and live within reasonable distance of a theater that books new release film from China, director Frank Woe's The Wandering Earth could very well be what you're looking for. In fact, it could easily be what you've been looking for and didn't even know it or forgot because it had been a while. To westernize this film that was the sensation of the year in China and one of the biggest non-Hollywood films globally otherwise this year probably feels a bit like a throwback to the pre-superhero, pre-9-11 really, sci-fi disaster era of blockbuster spectacle, films in which big casts undertake a huge adventure with the fate of the world on the line amidst soaring music and earnest moral conviction about the power of the human spirit to overcome a hypothetical apocalyptic scenario that usually doesn't even make a little bit of physical sense, but who cares? Now with The Wandering Earth, which is an adaptation of a novel by Lu Shishen, Guo essentially takes that well-worn and formerly American-dominated formula, pumps it up with 21st century effects, sound, and tech sensibilities, and processes it through the modern filters of Chinese familial melodrama to tug on the heartstrings and a canny pan-political moralism that reframes Beijing-friendly message of collective duty and self-sacrifice as a vision of globalist solidarity. And lest that sound in some ways too high-minded, it's still firmly entrenched in the realms of what could charitably be called the pulpy mode of science fiction that's always informed the guilt pleasures in every generation of the genre. Think Pacific Rim's heart in When Worlds Collide's body wearing Armageddon's skin. It's also hinged on what's easily the most ridiculous, not outright fantasy sci-fi conceit anyone has attempted to put to live action in probably my lifetime. Starting off in a near future where the sun is threatening to hyper-expand and consume the solar system, the governments of Earth unite to save the human race by, and I am not making a word of this up, installing enough strategically placed mountain-sized super engines, like I guess artificial volcanoes is the idea, on exactly one half of the planet's surface to stop the Earth from spinning and shoot it out of the solar system, effectively turning the entire planet into a massive spaceship being piloted toward an eventual new destination of new orbit around a new stable sun. The majority of humanity now lives in massive underground cities because the surface is frozen, while elite teams of soldiers, engineers, scientists, and a satellite space station crew keep an eye out from afar, manage the machinery and surface equipment necessary to keep things going for the 2,000 plus years all this wandering is apparently going to take. No, really, that part in the third act of every other sci-fi movie where they hit the all is lost moment and someone goes, wait a minute and comes up with the most elaborately idiotic solution possible, but it turns out to be the one that works, is the beginning of this movie. And then they have an even nuttier one for the ending. But the main plot, which is set 17 years into the whole wandering aspect, begins in earnest when a pair of adopted siblings sneak off to explore the surface and find themselves caught up in a global rescue effort when a cataclysmic failure knocks out half the world engines and threatens to send the Earth on a collision course with Jupiter, which they were passing close to in order to use its gravity as a way to slingshot themselves toward their eventual destination. Teamed with a motley assemblage of engineers and an elite team of power-armored soldiers, the idea is to help transport an ignition core to restart their local engine, traveling through the frozen canyons and radio communication with a space station commander who, wouldn't you just know it, happens to be the long estranged father of the main character. Subtle it is not, but this is a patriotic save the literal world disaster movie about thwarting the apocalypse through the power of obvious visual metaphors for the benefits of collective action. It believes in the ability of any problem to be solved by teamwork, self-sacrifice, and the totemic power of hard hats, dump trucks, meticulous plans etched out in notebooks, solemn reverence of Chinese national holidays, and school lesson memorization the way Armageddon believed in oil workers and Independence Day believed in presidential speeches. It's hard not to be impressed by the balls it takes to unironically build an entire scene around essentially we need as many people to really put their literal backs into it so we can all push this giant button that turns the earth back on as a real scene. But it kind of works in the way that such a scene has to work if a movie like this is going to be a thing. The spectacle is massive, the drama, while corny and quite familiar, especially if you watch a lot of Chinese family comedies, works and the scale of the thing puts most of its recent Hollywood counterparts completely to shame, largely because it feels totally unafraid of looking silly while also looking so huge. Three and a half stars, it's a real eye-opener. I had a blast with it. 